Good morning, Sunnyvale. Happy Friday. We'll get started in just a moment. Let's start. Okay, we are streaming correct. That's always good. <clears throat> Yeah, I agree. The, the backdrop is pretty interesting. We'll get to it in just a second. Started in just a second. Good morning, Sunnyvale. Happy Friday. Welcome to my weekly virtual office hours. Uh, this week's early artwork uh, is from one of the Murphy Park buildings. So this is a mural. Um, actually, it's uh, a glazed mural uh, representing the early pioneers to the Valley of Hearts Delight. So uh, interesting, an interesting design, uh, to say the least. But uh, happy that, you know, I, ran, I was by Murphy Park uh, last week for a Chinese New Year celebration. So, you know, whenever I'm out and uh, traveling around the city, I try to to collect more photos of all the artwork. You know, it's, it's actually um, amazing how much art we have spread throughout our community and always happy to uh, see that we're adding more all the time. So, you know, definitely one of the more interesting um, artworks, you know, we try to, especially in all the, the public buildings, we try to put artwork in all of our parks and, you know, spread around, spread around the city from a public standpoint. And then also from a private, you know, a private standpoint that, that all the new office buildings have, um, have uh, in retail ultimately have artwork related to them. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning. I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Uh, thank you for joining me again this week. Uh, this is the 151st uh, installment of my weekly office hours. You know, hope everyone is doing well, staying healthy. Uh, we have now reached 1,061 days since March 16, 2020, County Health Order started the shelter in place in an attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. We're rapidly coming up on that three-year anniversary when I converted my weekly coffee shop office hours um, into these weekly live stream addresses. And, you know, I haven't missed a week except for uh, surgery uh, since. And, you know, people still say they enjoy hearing from the mayor each week, whether or not they're watching this video live or watching it delayed. You know, these weekly addresses allow me to, you know, provide you some uh, background of what's happening in the city, answer some of your questions and, and provide some general words of encouragement uh, as far as uh, what, what people are dealing with on a daily or a weekly basis. So thanks for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale. You know, most Fridays, just like today, I follow up this live stream session with in-person meetings at Bean Scene on Murphy Avenue. So if you want to meet up with me, email me to reserve a 15-minute or 30-minute time slot. If you have a quick question, you know, uh, one or two minutes, you can kind of come between uh, the other people that I'm meeting. But but if you have, you know, want to have an extended discussion, it's always good to, to reserve time uh, to basically make sure that, that we can uh, meet one-on-one. -on -one. So anyway, let's let's go ahead and talk about what's happened at the federal, state, county, and city level over the last two weeks. You know, two weekends ago was the AFC-NFC championship. Uh, lots of people are watching that game on Murphy Avenue and other sports bars around the city. 
uh, you know, the 49ers and the Bengals both lost, uh, both of my teams that I were rooting for. But uh, the Super Bowl, of course, is set for this weekend and will be the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs. So lots of celebrations around the city that will be happening. Uh, and then last Monday, President Biden announced that he intends to end uh, the COVID-19 national and public health emergencies on Thursday, May 11th. And so this means several things, but mainly it means that, that Americans will have to start paying for COVID-19 testing and treatments, uh, which they didn't have to before. You know, most Americans um, have been able to obtain COVID-19 tests and vaccines at no cost during the pandemic. Uh, and they've been they're covered by you know Medicare and private insurance, uh, but you know people were able to get you know eight uh, at home tests per month uh, with no charge, and so uh, ultimately this means that that vaccines will start costing. You know Pfizer and Moderna both announced that the commercial prices for COVID nineteen vaccines will likely be between about. $80 and $130 per dose. That's about three or four times what the federal government was paying. So, you know, it's, um, it, it, it is a changing world. You know, COVID is kind of still here. I still hear people getting it for the first time or people who still haven't, still haven't tested positive for COVID. So uh, kudos to them. I got it uh, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago when I was in DC. Uh, and, you know, from a remind, as a reminder standpoint, you know, back in October, Governor Newsom said he would end the state COVID emergency at the end of February. So February 28th. So that's uh, coming up and past that point. Uh, it changes how our boards and commissions and other things uh, will be doing their meetings. You know, for, from a city standpoint, you know, what we're doing um you know, from a council from council standpoint, we went to hybrid meetings back in December, so that you know council members uh, can be should should be in the meeting. They have the option of of, of being remote uh, past March first. They can still be remote, but it's basically uh, if if you've been exposed to COVID, if you're sick or something of that nature, would be the only time that you would actually attend remotely. And there's limits on the number of times you can actually do that. Um, and then last Tuesday afternoon, um, I attended a study session at Fremont Union High School District uh, Board, and they were discussing um, the feasibility of opening a new high school, a comprehensive high school in the north part of Sunnyvale. And, and you know, um, Fremont Union High School District runs five, uh, five high schools, uh, one in Sunnyvale, uh, one on our border with Cupertino and the rest are Cupertino and officially San Jose, although, you know, it's kind of uh, Cupertino at the end of the day because San Jose has tendrils throughout uh, throughout the county. Uh, and, and, you know, there's been an ongoing equity issue uh, from a high school standpoint in North Sunnyvale since they closed Sunnyvale High School back in 1981. So I appreciate the board, uh, the superintendent, uh, continuing to have discussions on what it would take to add a school in North Sunnyvale, whether or not that's converting uh, like King's Academy, uh, where Sunnyvale High School used to be, or, or uh, creating a brand new school. So we'll see where, where this discussion goes, but especially as we're adding additional housing housing in Moffat Park. Uh, that only makes it um, more of an issue from an equity standpoint for those students that are in North Sunnyvale having to go all the way to center Sunnyvale, and then all the people in the, in the center of Sunnyvale or, or kind of the south half going to have to go to Homestead. So um, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're still having these discussions, and so we'll see where they go. Uh, last Tuesday evening, council met, and we had actually a workshop on the Moffat Park specific plan, this time talking about community benefits that we would like to see. And, you know, we talked about potential new fees, so a transportation impact fee for, for Moffat Park, um, and in, for, you know, infrastructure upgrades for sewers and water conveyance in the plan area, as well as, you know, a community, uh, and ultimately, uh, a, a community facility fee, and that would actually be citywide that would apply to all new developments that would collect funds for city facilities like libraries, fire stations, police stations, so that we make sure that we're helping to, to fund that infrastructure, that it doesn't get, um, you know, we have, the, um, we have unfunded plans to renovate a lot of things, and sometimes it's like, it's just finding that funding at the end of the day. Um, and then we, as far as the, the community benefits themselves, uh, we talked about 
three tiers of benefits, you know, that the staff recommended and mainly focused on the first tier, which was, you know, looking at more affordable housing, which we definitely need uh, affordable housing uh, around the city. And, and this is one of our opportunities as we're looking at Moffat Park is, is adding con conceivably some of that affordable housing. Um, we looked at open space and ecology. And so what are we doing to make sure that there's enough open space? I've seen plans for, you know, um, a approximately 70 acres of open space in Moffat Park, but there's also um, the ecology of that uh, wildlife wilderness on the north side, on the north west side that's that's um, close to the bay and what we can do to kind of preserve that for wildlife and then find the final kind of um, first tier item was mobility and infrastructure and it's making sure that that from an infrastructure standpoint uh, we're doing whatever we can to make um, make it easier for people to go in and out of, of Moffat Park, as well as, you know, get around within Moffat Park, you know, so making it bike and ped friendly, um, making sure that, you know, there's appropriate bridges across the, 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 the channels, making sure that the channels themselves are, are pedestrian bike zones, so trails, uh, and making, sure, you know, so all those things to make sure it's a walkable community is part of that. So, you know, those were some of the, the, um, some of the community benefits that we looked at, you know, stat, so that will be coming back to us when we're when we're looking at approving the final Moffat Park specific plan. So that's actually moving forward um, later in the spring. Uh, and then last Wednesday, I was at Fremont Union uh, or Fre sorry, Fremont High School for career day. You know, I had lots of fun. Uh, talking to the students, um, telling them my history in tech, and then how I kind of moved into a career of public service about 20 years ago, you know, kind of doing two simultaneous careers, and ultimately how I became Sunnyvale's first ele directly elected mayor. So it was good to good to meet up with students and talk to them about my past and kind of my, my path um, in getting to where I am today. Uh, and then Wednesday evening, you know, I attended a meeting uh, for the Santa Clara County School Board, where they were discussing the potential closure of Summit Denali Charter School here in Sunnyvale. And so lots of parents came out to talk, you know, um, in favor of maintaining that school. And there's the, the, the definitely the County Board of Education has only limited control over what the charter schools are. Um, so there's a lot of advocacy and we'll see what happens. But, you know, I've been working with several of the parents trying to make sure that that the school that their kids are excelling in uh, continue. So, you know, there's a there's a general separation between the school districts and, you know, charter schools and the city. But from a personal advocacy standpoint, trying to make sure that that we have the best city possible, we have the appropriate, you know, we have an equitable public school system, as well as we have, you know, vibrant um, options for kids that that don't work as well in the public school system. So uh, we'll see where, you know, those discussions go. Uh, last Saturday, uh, Evan Lowe, our assembly member, had his policy and pancakes event at the senior center. And, you know, assembly, uh, assembly member Lowe is our new state representative uh, for assembly district uh, 26. So that's the new district created from, you know, Cupertino, Sunnyvale, um, Santa Clara, and a little bit of San Jose. And so so, you know, it was a packed house, uh, over 200 people. Uh, thanks for everyone who attended. It was great to talk to so many residents, uh, you know, um, answering their questions, you know, and talking, talking to uh, several youth about, you know, getting more involved, you know, and, and constituents were allowed to submit bill ideas to Assemblymember Lowe's staff you know, what they would like to see done at the state legislature this year. Um, and thanks to the Rotary and the Lions who helped, you know, um, make the pancakes as well as kind of serve everyone. So it was a good, it was a great morning, um, you know, and it was, it was interesting to see Assembly Member Lowe kind of go into teacher mode. Uh, it became more of a town hall as he was asking, you know, what, what's the right thing to do for certain things and, and how, you know, how you reach consensus. And it was actually a, a great, a great effort from that standpoint to hear him um, talk about that. Um, and then as far as this week is concerned, you know, on Tuesday evening, uh, President Biden gave his second State of the Union speech. Um, I was preparing for our council meeting, so I only got to watch a few minutes of it. But uh, in general, it seemed uh, like a good speech, uh, very lively. Um, <clears throat> of course, 
you know, it's it's with the division within Congress and everything. It was it was interesting to see some of the comments and and how that played out. But uh, ultimately, um, always good to to hear the president speak. And then on Tuesday evening, council met and we had several things on the agenda. First, we declared uh, February is African American History Month, um, and so Shaka Camp Campbell, uh, our County County Poet Laureate joined us to recite a personal poem and always, always happy to see Shaka. Um, and then council considered the permanent closure of the 100 block of South Murphy Avenue. So uh, ultimately, we did adopt a resolution of intent to establish a pedestrian mall. We adopted a resolution to kind of continue the temporary closure of, 100, of the 100 block of South Murphy Avenue as we kind of wrap up the details. But, you know, to permanently close uh, Murphy Avenue, the city hat needs to comply uh, with the pedestrian mall law, mall law of 1960. So after we declared our intention uh, to make it into a pedestrian mall, we actually have to have another meeting um, to comply legally. So that'll be coming up uh, later this year. And then uh, we also gave staff direction on how to make that pedestrian mall ADA compatible. And so there are several things, um, several, like three different options um, and also kind of ranging in cost and um, time that would actually take to do. Ultimately, we chose concept three as, you know, so concept one was basically raise the entire uh, cobblestone street from, from curb to curb, um, which would have cost about $2 million. Uh, concept three was basically, and was recommended by the downtown association, uh, which would raise the existing parking base to curb height. So you would see kind of an angled ramp um, in each of those parking bays. And, and that ultimately um, ended up, that option was about half a million dollars, and, but it was also the, the least uh, effective, you know, that was the, the shorter uh, implementation as opposed to, I think, um, the, the raising the entire street was um, almost two years, 18 months to two years to actually get done. So, so uh, ultimately, I think it was the right, right solution and right decision from that standpoint. Um, also that evening, we extended the temporary eastbound uh, Tasman Lane closure, uh, and we have a study issue looking at what we can do to add uh, bike lanes and uh, sidewalks along that whole whole corridor. But, you know, we did a temporary closure. That was one of the things that that during COVID, I was seeing people walk in the streets along Tasman when I was out there delivering um, delivering masks. And and for me, it was important to to bring that to council. Let's see what we can do. And so we we did a uh, one lane closure uh, so that it, their people can bike and walk uh, better along that path. And for, you know, and ultimately it's been relatively successful, but we have thresholds that if traffic got too high, we would end up opening it up. But right now we have a study and that study will finish in 2024. And so we basically uh, extended that closure until 2024, unless there's, you know, too much traffic. And with Moffat Park not being that high, you know, as far as um, number of employees, we haven't seen those numbers increase that much. There's a, been a slight increase, like a 1% increase uh, per month, but but we're still way below the thresholds of that we set as far as reopening that, that corridor. Let's go ahead and get to our weekly COVID numbers. Um, COVID numbers across the nation continue to trend downward. You know, um, from a national standpoint, we've now reached 102.7 million cases. Um, that increased about 250,000 in the last week. You know, we've now have um, 268 million people with at least one shot, about 81% of our population. You know, we still have people passing away with COVID. We had another 3,000 in the last week, so about 1,119,000 uh, cases of uh, people who passed away with COVID. And then from a California sta standpoint, we stabilized. We're, we're about the same area. We're kind of drifting up and down. We've had, you know, 11,061,000 positive cases. Uh, we saw an increase, slight increase in the daily average. We're now at 2,600 cases, new cases a day of those people with COVID, uh, which is 
up slightly from 2,400 last week, but you know it was 2,700 a day a week before, but we're way down from 4,000, 5,000 a week a day that we had about a month ago. And you know, um, test case positivity uh, is slightly up at six percent. You know, I hear a lot of people catching COVID for the first time, so I think that's where that's coming from. Um, California has now had over 99,000 fatalities, uh, up by about 300 deaths in the last week. Uh, we'll probably pass 100,000 in the next over the next week. Um, approximately. So we'll see. Um, it'll probably be next Friday is when we'll hit that number. And then from a county standpoint, uh, we're still doing very well. You know, our cumulative case count is now at 471,000. It's up only about 1,500 new cases uh, since the last since last week. You know, we've had additional eight deaths of people uh, with COVID that have passed away. Um, that makes it 206, uh, 2,654 deaths from a county standpoint. And then, you know, more than 95% of those um, 18 and older, older, fully vaccinated, and over 70% of those that are eligible for the booster have already received it. You know, I, I spent a lot of time advocating on our city's behalf at the county level, regular discussions with county health and our county supervisors. Um, ultimately, they're looking at closing down the free testing and the free vaccinations at the end of this month. Uh, but you can still find those places that are open by going to secfreetest.org to get testing or secfreevax.org to get your vaccination or your booster. Um, let me announce some of the upcoming events that we have. You know, last weekend, Maker Nexus um, had a community yard sale in Moffat Park, and it was so successful, they'll be doing it again tomorrow. Uh, Saturday uh, from 10 to 4 p.m. And so Maker Nexus is located at 1330 uh, Orleans Drive. So, you know, if you want to hit uh, some yard sales or if you want to display some of your items, you can go on their website and uh, reserve a table. So uh, definitely uh, consider that. Sunday, of course, is the Super Bowl. So lots of parties, whether or not it's at home parties or, you know, at uh, sports bars or restaurants. Uh, lots of lots of people will be watching the game um, Sunday afternoon, and then upcoming. You know, next week, of course, Tuesday is Valentine's Day. So hopefully, you are celebrating uh, with someone you love. Uh, yes, it's uh, <clears throat> and restaurants. It's one of the busiest one of the busiest evenings that they have. Uh, and then the following week, Thursday, February twenty third, uh, for African American History Month, we'll be having. Uh, Onye Onse Machi, um, a world-renowned um, African drumming, dancing, um, world-renowned performer, but he'll be doing African drumming, uh, dancing songs and stories, and that's at the library from 4 to 5 p.m. on the 23rd. Um, as for upcoming council meetings, on Tuesday evening, Valentine's Day, uh, council will be uh, looking at approving our zoning amendment request regarding Block 20, and that's for several properties along Matilda, uh, just south of Olive, going to going to um, El Camino. And we talked about this last month, but ultimately um, staff found that there was a problem with the noticing, so they did a redo of the noticing, and so bringing that item back to council to have another discussion. And then that's on Tuesday night and then Thursday all day, uh, Sunnyvale, uh, Sunnyvale Council will be having its steady issue and budget workshop. So this is the second of our uh, three all day meetings that we have during the year. The first one was the strategic session back in January. The second one is our study issue and budget workshop. And then our, 30, uh, and our third one is our budget workshop, um, which will be happening in uh, May. Uh, but as far as study issues, you know, Sunnyvale is kind of unique as far as our study issue process. Uh, we have 40 additional study issues, and what council does is rank all of those, um, and then by on a department by department basis, um, and then uh, during our budget workshop, uh, the city manager will come back and, and have a listing of what made it above the, the line as far as staffing and cost and what was below the line. And then council can decide uh, if they want to invest additional dollars to add additional study issues. And, and there's a good variety of study issues every year. Um, but ultimately, um, 
it's um it's so that will be that will be the all day thursday meeting and i've been hearing from lots of residents as far as advocacy on what study issues they would like to see focused on next year and and ultimately this you know is is additional work that that count that staff, city staff is undertaking you know it's like our our standard work is you know keeping the services, providing all the services that the city does, you know, making sure that your streets are paid, making sure that your water is delivered, you know, and your sewer and your, your trash is picked up, you know, all the, all the standard operations, all the, um, you know, making sure the library is there and, and the, the parks are, are, you know, in good shape. And so this is additional items, either new tasks, new, new ideas that residents, council, uh, our commissioners have had, uh, they would like to see in a different, conceivably a different direction from a city standpoint. Standpoint. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our weekly questions. If you have a question, just add it to the chat, and I might be able to get to it if I can. If I can read it, um, Martin asked, "What is happening with the man having a hunger strike at City Hall?" So, yeah, it made uh, front page of the Mercury News earlier this week, um, and I met with Mr. Iran, who's a developer. You know, he's building 18 units um, in Sunnyvale on an old gas station site. And part of the conditions of approval when his project was approved was that he needed to do appropriate oversight and environmental um, protection for the health and safety of his long term residents. And ultimately, he didn't get the full county approval. So he made some mistakes. He, you know, he's supposed to get county approval before he did, you know, his vapor barriers uh, to make sure that there's not fumes um, leaching through the soil and coming into kind of the underground of, of the buildings. So he put in a vapor barrier without the appropriate inspections before and after um, and is wanting the city to say, well, we'll come up with a different, an alternate plan for the, for the final, final residents. Um, and, you know, it's going to take a month or, or so with the county, let's just go forward. And and from a city standpoint, you know, you didn't meet what you were said you were going to do. The other the other difficult thing as far as that's concerned is it's going to be additional costs that the people that live in these units. Um, so there's going to be um, conceivably a homeowners association that they will have to do on a month on a yearly basis pay for inspection to see if if there are chemicals in there you know in the under in the um, below their building is it collecting you know is it, it and so from that standpoint you know a lot we know sometimes homeowners associations do don't do the right thing they might decide that they don't want to do this anymore so it's difficult from that standpoint. And, you know, I, I met with, I met with Mr. Iran and, you know, for his own health, I was, you know, pleading with him not to do, you know, not to continue his hunger strike, uh, but, you know, wait for the process to, to, to move forward. He's, you know, trying to apply pressure in an interesting way. And I've received lots of emails from his family and, and, you know, his partners, uh, for, for, you know, just, just allow him to go move forward. Um, you know, from, from my standpoint, you also have to consider the health and safety of, of the long-term residents there and making sure that the county is, is fine with whatever, uh, the ultimate proposal is. So, um, we'll see where that goes, but, you know, I'm hope I, I keep, you know, talking to him and, and urging him to do what's right and, and, and for his own health, for his own family's health, you know, health, uh, make sure that, that he his health is um that he that his health is good and and you know allow this process to work and as quickly as possible. Um, Eric asked any way to have more 15, 30, 60 minute parking spots um, in the lots behind the two sides of Murphy shops and have people staying longer for eating parking. Uh, for eating, park in more, more in the garages. This way, the shops with short-term customers and fast food services get in and out faster. So there are already some short-term parking spots in those lots. Um, you know, and I, and I'll, I'll talk to city staff on conceivably adding additional ones. But yeah, you know, I brought this up when we were talking about closing um, Murphy Avenue to make it into a pedestrian mall, you know, uh, it, making sure that the, the spots along Washington Avenue uh, become permanent short term parking and or, um, you know, a few of them would be uh, conceivably ADA parking. So making sure that there are those short term spots um, in those areas. But yeah, this is one of the things that we look at as we're trying to 
um, make sure that people have appropriate parking downtown and are not just utilizing street parking or surface parking wherever they can. Uh, David commented, I always hated the no crossing signs along Sunnyvale Avenue between Washington and Evelyn. I'm glad to see they've been taken down. Can you tell me more? So yeah, uh, one of the things that the governor signed at the beginning or um, last fall was a new bill uh, basically um, stopping jaywalking laws. So, so conceivably, there's still the concept that, you know, for your own health and safety, you can't, um, you shouldn't be walking, you know, into in the middle of El Camino Real uh, with tons of traffic going. So, so there is that sort of thing, but, but you, you won't be ticketed anymore if there are no cars. So if you're, if you're, you know, crossing, um, from let's say the the parking lot um, on Carroll and Evelyn through kind of through mid block um, to get to Murphy Avenue. Uh, those that's where those signs used to be. It was you know go to the corners in order to cross. Depending upon what the traffic, if there's no traffic, crossing there safely um, is now a lot allowed by what the governor signed into law, and that became active on January 1st. And so I followed up with city staff and made sure that that those signs were ultimately taken down. Uh, Cynthia asked, I saw big signs in downtown Sunnyvale uh, noticing the meeting. What, what meeting was that announcing? So that was announcing the follow-up for the pedestrian um, for the pedestrian zone. So, you know, uh, what we did Tuesday night was declare, basically declare our intention to convert the 100 block of South Murphy Avenue into pedestrian mall. Um, now we will have a subsequent meeting uh, where we'll actually do that final approval. So that will be happening on uh, May 16th, Tuesday, May 16th. And so that's what those signs are, is just public noticing that at we've done our intent and now kind of it's, it's it's the next step in all the legal process as far as that's concerned. Uh, Jennifer asked, when is the new city hall going to open? So staff will be moving in in March. Uh, we should be having a ribbon cutting ceremony uh, sometime in uh, April or early May. So that will be coming up. Uh, looking forward to that. I've taken some tours and it's just looking fantastic inside. Uh, Alex asked, with all the rain, is the city ending the droughts restrictions? So yeah, it's been a rainy winter, but we're not completely out of the drought yet. We're looking to, of course, you know, um, we have programs to try to better utilize recycled water from wastewater treatment plant. And, you know, the restrictions are set to expire in June. And then we'll reevaluate whether or not we continue them for additional year. You know, I met with Valley Water Board uh, and Valley Water staff this week and they're still evaluating what they're going to do, but they have lots of programs that continue to, um, you know, have people convert their lawns into drought resistant late native landscaping. And so, you know, uh, there's still lots of programs as far as that's concerned uh, to try to save water as much as possible. Yes, the snowpack is looking good, um, but, <clears throat> you know, uh, you don't know what next year might look like. So, so from from that standpoint, um, it's really it's really critical that that we are you know very cautious of what we're doing with this precious resource. Um, I don't see any questions in the comment. Um, I don't see any questions. Uh, so let's go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for joining me again this week. We still live in uncertain times, you know, new issues come up almost every day. Uh, but I just want to thank thank you that that, you know, no matter what challenges we face, we face them together. You know, I'm really proud of what Sunnyvale's done and, and how our residents have responded to the challenges over the last few years. Uh, COVID has not been easy. Uh, but, you know, people have really, you know, done their part, you know, they've, they've showed their generosity, showed their kindness, you know, your actions and your attitude really do make a difference. You know, Sunnyvale will emerge from this as a stronger community. We're in this together and we will get through this together. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. Have a great Valentine's Day. Goodbye.